Coming up on the Bluffton News, we'll explore all that the Buckwalter Place Farmer's Market has to offer and we'll reveal the details of a generous grant received by May River Montessori. All that and of course the latest headline business and entertainment news right now on the Bluffton News. Welcome to the Bluffton News. I'm Annalisa Itkor, and these are Bluffton's current headlines. Five Embry-Riddle errors led to five Sand Shark unearned runs as number eight South Carolina Beaufort eliminated the fifth-seeded Eagles with a 7-2 victory Saturday in the NAIA World Series. With the win, South Carolina Beaufort extends its season and advances to play the loser of number two Lee and number seven Point Park. And subtropical storm Beryl made Memorial Day weekend something of a nail-biter for those looking to get outdoors. But for the most part, weather was much better than expected. Aside from some blustery winds and the occasional brief shower, there has been enough beach weather to keep visitors and locals smiling. Beryl will continue to impact the Bluffton area throughout the weekend, drawing closest to our area around Tuesday. You can expect continued high winds and high seas, as well as scattered rain and thunderstorms. And Jonas Armstrong, a Beaufort resident injured this past February in a crash with a stolen Port Royal fire truck, is suing the city and the town of Port Royal, alleging firefighters acted improperly when they left the truck unlocked and running and unattended while responding to a medical call. However, Beaufort's attorney, Marshall Waldron, says responsibility for the wreck ultimately lies with officials at Naval Hospital Beaufort for allowing Calvin Hunt, a Marine accused of stealing the truck, to flee from the facility. Armstrong's leg was badly injured and his 1998 Dodge SUV was totaled when it was hit February 24th by the fire truck as Hunt made an illegal U-turn on Rebo Road. Armstrong is seeking actual and punitive damages. The South Carolina debate over mandatory sprinklers in homes has begun to heat up. Lee Levescu of the Ladies Island St. Helena Fire District says the fire sprinklers in all new homes in South Carolina should be considered an investment that will dramatically reduce the number of fire deaths. But home builders say that investment is too steep for some aspiring homeowners and that the benefits of such a requirement aren't as clear as advocates say. As the debate continues, a final decision on whether sprinklers will be required could take months. Meanwhile, Levescu and the firefighters across the state are attempting to drum up support for the mandate. South Carolina consistently has one of the highest death tolls as a result of fires. So far this year, 37 people have died from fires. And voluntary evacuation orders no longer are part of the hurricane plan in South Carolina. One of the major tweaks in the 2012 plan is the elimination of the voluntary order, which was a bit of an oxymoron. If it's time to evacuate in the future, the governor will issue, it, will issue one evacuation order, which will be considered mandatory. The change is meant to ensure there's no misinterpretation of the danger. Another change in South Carolina's plan might have more impact on individual coastal residents and visitors. You Using updated models of storm surge impact, some of the evacuation zones and routes have been changed. Also, the American Red Cross, which operates evacuation shelters in the state, is switching to a tiered system designed to allow organizers to open only as many shelters as necessary. For example, only five out of 20 shelters in an area might open at first, and the others will open as it becomes clear if more space will be needed. All changes, which are part of the annual streamlining of state emergency procedures, are included in the state hurricane plan on the Emergency Management Division website. Hurricane season begins Friday. This weekend, the Bluffton area was booming as the Memorial Day area sales took shoppers by storm. Stores like Birkenstock Barefoot and the newly opened Josie's Yogurt enjoyed increased sales while residents and visitors enjoyed great deals. More indicators that Bluffton business is booming is coming up in Shelley West Hodge's business report. In the meantime, here's what's happening around the state. Greenville police say that a teen was arrested Saturday and charged with being in the possession of a stolen vehicle. They say the teen was in the back of the patrol car waiting to be transferred to jail and told authorities he was having trouble breathing. The officer rolled down the window of the cruiser and the 17-year-old escaped. At around 10 p.m. Saturday, an officer spotted the teen and arrested him after a short chase. His name has not been released. 
And investigators say early tests showed that there was nothing dangerous in white powder found inside a shipment of rubber products being shipped to Michelin headquarters in South Carolina. Investigators say the powder tested positive for high levels of protein. Anderson County Sheriff's deputies say the powder was found last Wednesday by a worker at a storage facility for Michelin North America. It was inside one of two envelopes found in the package. The second envelope wasn't opened and was sent directly to a lab in Columbia to be tested, identifying the substance could take weeks. And finally, Richland County deputies say they spent seven hours staking out a home after a woman falsely claimed she was being held hostage there. Authorities say they responded to a home at around 1 a.m. Saturday after a woman called and said her ex-boyfriend was holding her against her will. Officers set up a perimeter and began efforts to get the man to come outside. At around 8.30 a.m., deputies finally knocked on the door and were told by the boyfriend's father that neither his son nor the ex-girlfriend were there. Deputies are now looking for the woman who made the call. They say she'll be charged with filing a false report and illegal use of a telephone. For more information on these headlines and more, please check out the media sources you see listed on your screen. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. When we return, Lynn Hummel of the Bluffton Sun joins us with more details on the most current stories as we bring you hot off the presses on the Bluffton News. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. Joining me now is Lynn Hummel from the Bluffton Sun with all of the latest on what's new in Bluffton. Hey, Lynn. Hi, Annalisa. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Now, what is happening in Bluffton this week? Well, we have some new developments over in the Simmonsville, Buck Island Road, um, the developments that have been ongoing there. Back in, 19, or in 2009, Town Council came up with a vast plan to bring these two older neighborhoods kind of up to par with the rest of the town. And that included water and sewer infrastructure, assistance for home repairs for low and moderate income families, and cleaning out of ditches and culverts and that sort of thing. And the most recent thing is that the sewer has been expanded to more than 50 homes from New Mustang Drive down to um, Bluffton Parkway. And also design review is underway for sewer extension further extension from resort services on Buck Island Road to just north of Henry Jones Drive. Gotcha. Now, what uh, after this phase is complete, what is left to do? Well, discussions are ongoing for projects such as sidewalks, lighting, and additional sewer. And there's also the second phase of the E911 addressing to be done. Gotcha. Now, I know that they're working very hard in Bluffton on the new budget. Are there any surprises in the 2013 Bluffton Town budget? Well, there weren't any surprises, really. The, the existing services that we have will continue, and uh, there will be slight staff increases as far as people, and there are no tax increases this year. But there was one item that sort of um, caused some, con some discussion when Manager Anthony Barrett walked the council through the, the whole plan. Um, Councilman Ted Huffman and Mike Raymond questioned the 3% cost of living increase for town staff, but Barrett and Mayor Lisa Sulka defended the increase, saying that this was a good way to show appreciation for our town staff and maybe retain them a little bit longer. Right. Well, when is this final budget going to be approved? Well, they have to do some final tweaks, but the budget is expected to be approved or adopted on June the 12th, and then it will take effect on July 1. Gotcha. Now, Everybody's excited. It was Memorial Day weekend, so that kind of means that the school year is coming to an end. And I know that the students at Teachers at Okatee Elementary are celebrating a recent award. Tell us about that. Right. Well, Okatee Elementary was one of just five schools in South Carolina to be honored with the State Department of Education's Exemplary Writing Award for the, its outstanding student writing program. It was given after extension evaluations and site visits. And Principal Jamie Pinckney says that the teachers make writing a part of every subject and as it is in nearly every real world profession. I'm excited to hear that writing was always my favorite subject in school. Now how have the students' skills improved since starting this program? Well, Ms. Pinckney says that the students are writing more and they're reading more and that their scores on the state's school report card have improved from average in 2008 to excellent in 2010 and 11. Wow, that is inspirational indeed. Lynn, thanks so much. Thank you, Annalisa. 
With Memorial Day over and summer on the way, the temperatures are not only rising outside, but things are really heating up with some great local theater. Rodney Vaughn is here to talk about just that. Hey, Rodney. Hey there, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what shows are happening in the area? I certainly will, and if it's too hot for you to be outside this summer, you can stay indoors and enjoy some great theater entertainment. Uh, my friend and I went a couple weeks ago to the historic Savannah Theater, that's downtown in Savannah and saw an awesome show called The Beat Goes On. That show will be discontinued before this show airs, but we are wanting to promote today their new productions called Jukebox Journey. That's a, a journey of music through the 1940s up until the current time that would be popular jukebox hit, hits that you would know. Uh, and they're also, their other show is Savannah Live that celebrates the 10th anniversary of the Savannah Theater with the current troupe that they have. I always hear nothing but rave reviews about that theater. How do we get ticket information? Well, you can get tickets on their website, and it's savannatheater.com. They're $35 and $16 for youth tickets. It's a great production. It's really loud, really musical, a lot of audience participation. I highly recommend it. Okay. Now, what's up in local Bluffton Community Theater? Local theater, Sun City Troop is promoting their show, Pajama Game. They're currently in rehearsals for that, and they will start uh, with that show the second and the third week of the month of June and you can get tickets uh, at their box office and the number there is 645-2700, they're $23 and Pajama Game has been running uh, on Broadway for a long time and the last little run they had was with Harry Connick Jr. And that got a lot of promotion, and we're going to do it with a, a Sun City twist. So, Rodney, I understand that the May River Theater Company is holding auditions for their next production. They certainly are. The next production will be the producers. And the May River Theater needs a cast of 10 men and 10 women that are vocally and uh, musically talented. Dancing helps a lot, too. Uh, that show is going to open August the 10th, but rehearsals for that will start Monday, June the 4th. And you can uh, show up there at the theater at 7 p.m. or you can call 837-7798 if you need some more information about it. Thanks, Rodney. Thank In you. just a moment, we'll be hearing all about the Buckwalter Place Farmer's Market from Larry Hughes and Jane Schmidt from May River Montessori has some exciting news about a special grant. That's coming up on the Bluffton News. Welcome back. You know, here in the Low Country, we are very privileged to have access to an abundance of farmers markets. And Larry Hughes is here to talk about one of the latest editions, the Buckwalter Place Farmers Market. Thanks for joining us, Larry. Oh, pleasure, Annalisa. Now, how many farmers markets are there in Beaufort County, and where exactly is yours? Well, we're in uh, in Buckwalter Place, which is. Uh, a, a retail development on the corner of Buckwalter Parkway and, and uh, Bluffton Parkway. And people will probably know it from the Publix Market that's there and the new Station 300 Family Entertainment Center. And we're part of a circuit of, of five uh, farmers markets all around the county. So there's one every day from Tuesday through Saturday. And if people want to find out where they are exactly, they can go on the county website and find out the operating uh, times and days of the uh, week and where they are. Great. Now, do you have some inside tips for those who may not know that much about farmers markets about how to have a good farmers market experience? I do. Uh, I know I'm going into my third season now as a volunteer market manager at our farmers market, and I've learned a lot from talking with our customers and the farmers, and there's, there's some things that immediately uh, uh, come to mind. The first thing is when, when you get to a farmer's market, kind of stroll around, uh, take a look uh, at everything that's there so you can get an idea of the, uh, of the quality uh, of the produce and the offerings uh, that week. Uh, take the time to talk to the farmers. That's the best thing about the farmer's market experience. That's the ability to interact with the farmers by talking with them. Sometimes you can learn the best way to uh, use an item uh, or, or prepare it. Uh, and they love uh, to be able to talk with folks. That's what makes them a regular customer and makes them want to come back. Don't get carried away when you get to a farmer's market. Lots of times uh, people go and they, they overbuy. Uh, the best thing to do is size things up and uh, just buy what you can uh, easily use. Uh, another thing is uh, lots of times if you've got a menu plan in mind uh, or there are some things you know you need to replenish, 
uh, you can go and, and look for those specific items. But for instance, this week, we just had peaches start to come into the market. So you might get there and not know that the season has started uh, in peaches. And that's something uh, that you'll find out when you get to the market. So take advantage of what's there. And you can make some spur of the, the moment decisions, too. And if you're on a tight budget, uh, one of the things that you might want to keep in mind is that early or late uh, in a growing season, like peaches are just coming into the market right now, they tend to be a little bit more expensive. In a couple of weeks, when everybody has peaches or everybody has corn, prices tend to come down a little bit. So if you're on a tight budget, if you wait till kind of the beginning of the growing season or wait till the end, you can do a little better uh, price-wise. Another thing is, if you ask the farmers, sometimes they'll have seconds or bruised produce that you can use in jellies, jams, sauces, uh, that kind of thing. And you might get a little better price on that. Absolutely. And uh, one final tip I'll get, say is you might want to go to the farmer's market hungry because I'll tell you, I always have my lunch or my dinner there because they have such great food, prepared food there. It's always a great deal of fun at the farmer's markets. Larry, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. May River Montessori was the recent recipient of a special grant that will allow their students to have a unique learning experience. Here to tell us all about it is Jane Schmidt. Welcome, Jane. Thank you so much for having me. Now, what are the advantages of having iPads? Because that's what this grant is all about. What's the advantage of having these as a learning tool in the Montessori elementary classroom? Well, these iPads will be used in our third, fourth, and fifth grade classrooms as a multifunctional teaching tool. There are numerous Montessori iPad applications for tutoring and for learning. The students will be using them for reports and for research projects, and it's going to be a great advantage to have one available for each student. It amazes me how proficient kids are on computers these days. Now, can you tell me a little bit about May River Montessori School in general? Well, we're happy to say that May River Montessori is celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. We have 165 students ranging from two years of age to the fifth grade, and we're located right in the heart of downtown Bluffton at 60 Calhoun Street. The, the Montessori curriculum is a self-paced and very hands-on program. However, it's very structured and it's a great program. I hear terrific things about the Montessori School. Now, why did you decide to apply for this particular grant? Well, we certainly want to thank Tanger Outlets for recognizing our school, and this grant will help us keep our, our um, tuition affordable. Reaching out to the community is just one way that we can help make a Montessori education available to more students. Great. Well, it's very exciting, and it sounds like it's going to make May River Montessori School an even better experience for the kids, and congratulations on the grant. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, Tanger. In this week's Bluffton Business Report, Shelly West Hodges is on the scene for a ribbon cutting at Plum's Restaurant in Bluffton and get ready to meet our special pet of the week, Sally, when we come back from the break. Today on the Bluffton News, Shelly West Hodges takes us on location for an exciting ribbon cutting. Shelly? Hi, Annalisa. We are here today at Plum's Restaurant and Bistro in Bluffton, and we are celebrating their grand opening and ribbon cutting. Very excited to have them here. Plum's has a restaurant over in Beaufort as well as Solstice Grill, and we are ready and waiting to open the doors for business for them. We had a great turnout here today for Plum's Restaurant Grand Opening and Ribbon Cutting here in Belfair Village in Bluffton. And we have the owner here, Lance Price. Lance, tell us a little bit about Plum's Restaurant. Plum's Restaurant has been around for about 25 years in Beaufort. And we've been making eclectic, uh, fresh-style food for 
for a long time. We started out as a lunch place over there and then we evolved into dinner and we've been serving really great fresh food, a lot of salads and seafood and things like that that we can source locally. So we've kind of evolved into to what we had become, which is kind of an eclectic low country, a little bit of a southern, almost Cajun style cuisine um, with a real emphasis on freshness. So uh, it, it worked really well for us there and um, we love downtown Beaufort and we love the way the county's growing. So. We love coming over here and hopefully doing the same thing. Okay. Now Lance, tell us why Plums decided to come to Bluffton. Uh, we've had a lot of Bluffton customers over the years and Hilton Head customers and, and they were always asking me to come over and, and add to this area and I really wanted to grow and I knew growing in Bluffton would be the best thing for us because the clientele here is very similar to the clientele over in Beaufort and, we, and we've always wanted to be here and then one day I finally got the opportunity to get in a building I knew was in a good spot and we like this spot and our only challenge really at that point was to get that reclaimed look that we kind of are known for in Beaufort so we found items that were around to kind of add it to this this kind of modern atmosphere to, to kind of level it out a little bit and um, jumped right in. Well Lance the food is great and y'all have done an excellent job redecorating this property. It is beautiful and we are excited to have you here and have you a part of Bluffton. Back to you Annalisa. Thanks, Shelley. Now, I am pleased to introduce you to Sally. This tender-hearted terrier hound mix was surrendered to a kill shelter by heartless owners. She clearly had just given birth and tested positive for heartworms. Well, now she is safe and sound at Brooks Haven and has begun her heartworm treatment. We have all fallen in love with this sweet little girl and are eager to find her just the right home where she will be pampered and doted on forever and always. For more information on Sally and other adoptable animals, please contact Brooks Haven Animal Rescue at 843 Three seven five seven seventy three eighty seven. Well, that wraps up today's edition of the Bluffton News. I'm Annalisa Itkor. We'll see you next time.